jump forces. So when we jump, we exert a downward action force on the ground uh, with our legs, and then the ground exerts a reaction force on us. And since that's a force on us, it accelerates us. And uh, since we need to exert that force over some distance in order to gain speed to leave the ground, the uh, height of the jump depends uh, both on the force that you exert and on the distance over which you apply that force. Uh, that's what we've been calling the push height. Now, the average amount of force that you exert on the ground, if you want to determine that, it's found from the jump magnification. Just to remind you, the jump magnification is the ratio of how high you jump to how far you push from crouch to takeoff. So, in this example, the jump magnification is uh, 4. We jump 4 times higher than we uh, push. Uh, so, in that case, if the character's weight is 200 pounds, then the amount of force that they exert on the ground to do uh, this uh, big jump would be 800 pounds. Now, you should remember that the jump magnification also affects the timing uh, when we're pushing off the ground. So, the push time, the uh, number of frames from the crouch to takeoff, uh, depends on the jump magnification, and the, the larger the jump magnification, the shorter the push time. So, this tells us that the physical strength of a character, say, uh, some superhero with uh, enormous strength like the Hulk, this physical strength is reflected in the timing of the push, and that uh, timing is uh, set by the jump magnification. So, if uh, the character is exerting a huge amount of force to uh, jump an impressive height, then uh, the timing needs to be very short in the pushing off the ground. Now, this uh, we can also understand by the law of acceleration. If the character pushes with a very large force, then that means there's a very large acceleration, and so the time that they're in contact with the ground is going to be short, and that's the uh, push time. So here's um, another example from uh, another superhero film, uh, Hancock. And notice that, uh, in this case, when Hancock jumps, he exerts a very large force on the ground, similar to the force that he um, that's exerted on landing. So, here he is uh, taking off. So he's about to uh, do his jump. And here he is landing So, uh, let's talk about uh, landing a little bit. So, the, uh, the landing is rather similar to the takeoff. In fact, it's um, basically just the reverse of the takeoff. Instead of gaining speed, we lose speed and come to a stop. So, we can talk about, um, for the landing, a stop height, similar to the push height for the takeoff. And we can talk about a stop time, similar to the push time of the uh, takeoff. Now, uh, the stop time is related, the timing in the stop is related to the takeoff in the following fashion. The um, uh, time that you push times the ratio of the heights gives you the stop time. Let's look at a quick example of that. So, let's say that we push off for nine inches and the takeoff is in three frames. Uh, well, if the landing has a uh, slightly deeper crouch of 12 inches on landing, then the timing of the landing will be proportionately uh, longer. So it'll be four frames on the landing for the stop time, as opposed to three frames of the push time. So here's just the, the math there. Now, the uh, 
the mathematics is not as important as the concept that if the crouch on the landing is similar to the crouch when you're pushing to take off, then the timing of the landing is going to be similar to the timing of the takeoff. Uh, on the other hand, if the crouch on the landing is shorter, then the timing of the landing is going to be shorter and quicker. If the crouch distance on landing is longer, then the timing on the landing is longer. In other words, in order to make the landing look consistently uh, believable with the takeoff, if the uh, landing has a deeper crouch, then the timing of the landing should have a few more frames than the timing of the takeoff. Now, we can also talk about the forces on the landing. So if the timing of the landing is similar to the timing of the takeoff, then the forces uh, on the landing are similar to the forces on the uh, takeoff. Uh, if the landing is quicker timing, then the forces on landing are going to be larger. And if the landing has a slower timing, then the forces uh, on the landing are going to be smaller than the forces on the takeoff. So if we have an extreme um, jump, like uh, for the human cannonball landing in a net, uh, we need to uh, have a much longer uh, stop height, and that's, that's what the net uh, accomplishes. So uh, you can think of this as the the net minimizes the force of impact on landing by extending the time of impact. That's what we're calling the stop time. Um, and this is done by increasing the stop height. So the uh, net is flexible, so the performer uh, travels a significant distance uh, before they're fully brought to a stop. Now, you may notice if you look carefully that uh, for these kinds of extreme uh, jumps, the performer landing in a net uh, typically will try to uh, land on her back. So you see here that the performer in the air uh, does a turn, turning motion so that uh, the body is rotated uh, so that it lands um, with her back uh, to the net. Um, now there's a good reason for this. If you uh, if the performer did not do this turn and landed headfirst into the net, uh, this could cause serious injury. Uh, on the other hand, the human body can withstand uh, very high uh, decelerations, uh, over 20 Gs, um, if the deceleration happens um, th uh, through the back as opposed to uh, vertically um, uh, through the length of the body. So, in uh, summary, uh, the force ex exerted when jumping is the weight of the character times the jump magnification. The physical strength of a character jumping is reflected in the timing of the jump. So, if the f character is exerting a very large force uh, in jumping, a very large force implies a very large acceleration and a large acceleration means a very short uh, time. Uh, the landing is the uh, reverse of the takeoff, so a lot of similarities between takeoff and landing. Um, the timing of the landing is linked to the timing of the takeoff and the ratio of the stop to push heights. So if we stop over a longer distance, then the timing of the landing is a little bit longer than the timing of the takeoff, and vice versa. And finally, the force of impact on landing is reduced by extending the stop height, which also extends the uh, stop time.